Hey guys, welcome back to Bambi TV. Guys, we're going to be reacting to Andrew Tate gives power to George Janko. Guys, let's get straight into this. In part two of the Andrew Tate interview on George Janko's podcast, Andrew and George had a really interesting conversation about Islam versus Christianity. This is how it went. I am not an Islamic scholar, and I don't consider myself knowledgeable on Islam. I'm new to the religion. I'm only a year in and I'm studying as best I can, but there's a lot of people who know more than me. But from my understanding and my practices, Islam is very rigid and it's strict and you know what's right and you know what's wrong. Yeah. And it provides solutions and answers in a very strict, non-ambiguous way. And I feel like if you live a difficult life, like we talked about earlier about why my fan base is so galvanized and why they believe in me, because I offer rigid solutions to problems. And if you come from a difficult place or you graze in a difficult country or a war zone, you're going to look for that rigidity. I don't think the softness of Christianity, and I don't say that as an insult, mm. I just state that as a matter of fact, will be appealing to people who have come from war zones. I, I just don't, I think it's going to be very difficult to convert them to Christianity. And, and we're seeing now in the Western world, huge proportions of Christian countries are now just becoming Islamic strongholds and, and they can't be penetrated or, or changed. And, and, okay, so, but you're making it seem like a lot of people that, uh, that worship Islam, they're very, very strict with their policies. There's, no, a no, lot, no. There, there's a lot that I, and by the way, let me speak positively about Islam so sure. people don't confuse my, my nature. We're friends here, by the way, everyone. We're on the same, yeah, I, I, I Don't agree. speak for me. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, no, no. no. Uh, Heathen. I, I, <laughs> uh, no, I actually, I, I really, 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 really respect Islam for yeah. one reason, the way they stand up for their God. Absolutely. And I actually take notes from them. Yep. So I don't want anybody, here. in fact, my God is their prophet. Yep. So we, do, right. we do see a lot of That's eye right. to eye. We just don't see the, the final destination of who God is. Correct. Um, but I definitely respect anybody in their, in their faith. And I think it's, I'd rather you have faith in a God than you have no faith in God at all. Agreed. So we're on the same plane for that. Okay. Um, but to say that Christians have values and they don't follow them, and Islam does, it's not true. I, I have many friends. For example, you're Islamic now, yep. but you drink yep. and you smoke. No, I don't drink. Oh, not anymore. But there's a lot that I have friends with that do. Yeah. So the, the theory of them not following their rules is that's just a man. I don't think that's a religion. I think every man falls short. Yeah. I, think, I think this is the truth. I think an Islamic man that stands in front of me sins against God. And I think a Christian man sins against God. Oh, yeah. We're not perfect in any regard. Yeah. But let's tie back to something I said earlier. We're not perfect in any regard. And it's all down to how you once again measure the success of a religion. We talked earlier about measuring the success of a business and life numbers. being about money. Numbers, right? But why is numbers account when it comes to faith? I why, think it well, should be your, your well, faith. That's it. that's it. It should be your faith. But faith is very intangible and hard to measure. So I'm, I'm just use, be using my limited human brain. Mm -hmm. Let's just try and measure the success of a religion. Well, the fastest growing religion is Islam. It's not the biggest. It's the fastest growing. Yeah. I think if you were to look at the insanity of the West, I think Islam opposes it hardest in regards to the, the pure insanity that is being inflicted upon and bestowed upon children in the West. I think Islam I want to say something, a compliment for them. What I, I do appreciate is that they, they, they don't let you cross bounds, right? So, for example, when they were making a mockery of my Lord and Savior, yeah. I didn't see Christians trying to tear down these movies, and I didn't see Christians trying to, hey, that's not okay, or blah, 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 right? Islamic people were like, you're not talking about a prophet like that. Correct. So I, I find that very beautiful, and I understand that they hold their... Values. But let me ask you a question. Yeah. Do you not find that appealing? Very. Do you not find it appealing to be part of a religion where you get to stand up for what you really believe in and say, no, you can't say that. No, you won't do that. No, not to us. Yeah. I think they have beautiful qualities that I should learn from. Yeah. But you that doesn't mean that I have to worship their God. I mean, people often ask why I reverted to Islam. And I, I, I heard someone say something that you see life and you see other people as you see yourself. So if you're a thief, you think everyone's a thief. You're worried about everyone stealing from you because you would steal in their position. Mm. That's how you like view the world. It's how cheaters view. It's how cheaters view the world. That's right. And then I was sitting thinking, well, maybe, and of course, this just came from my mind. I said, well, maybe you see a religion how you see yourself. Like, I see myself as somebody who is feared nobody would want to mock. I see myself as somebody with strict standards and discipline. I see myself as somebody who stands up for what he believes in and doesn't care if he's assaulted and attacked for it. Mm. Maybe that's why it was so appealing to me. I, and then I, I'd sit and I'd study it and I'd read and I'd realize how close it actually is to Christianity. We believe in so many of the same things. 
and I don't want to get in trouble here because I am not an Islamic scholar in any way, but I've had even other people say to me, some Christians who I spoke to who started to read the Quran, they're like, it's just condensed. It's like stronger. Yeah. And, and, and I think that's what the appeal of it is to me. And I, I also like having hard yeses and nos. And I, I believe that if you have a religion where you just accept everything, yeah. then you believe in nothing. There has to be a line. In life, there has to be a line that you won't let someone cross. And with God, there should be the same. And my only concern with Christianity, and I, I argue this with my brother at length, is if God will really, truly forgive anything, then, then, then if he'll truly forgive you doing the most heinous acts you can possibly think of, and, and you repeatedly do them, and you won't learn your lesson, and you'll do them over and over again, and even Christians themselves won't ostracize you, is that too far? Is that too much freedom? Like you asked earlier. I love this. So this is beautiful. It's actually in my notes. I was going to circle this with it. Um, let, me, let me just give me a second to make sure I word this properly. Absolutely. For, let's circle to forgiveness. Yeah. How many times should you forgive a man? Well, that's a really good question because we are sinners and we make endless mistakes. And the prophet that you see as Jesus, do you know what he talks about forgiveness as? He's, Peter asks him, how many times should you forgive a man? And he says, seven times 77. And then he also describes the way judgment day comes. And he goes, you will be measured by the measurement that you gave others. So the way you looked at your brothers and sisters, that man wronged you, but you said, oh, you're dead to me. Your, your debt, I don't even want it. Yeah. That's how you'll be measured. But here, let me circle back. Repentance isn't doing the same sin over and over and enjoying it and asking for forgiveness. That's why God doesn't judge your actions, like I said. He judges the reflection of your heart. Yeah. So if I sinned against you, there's two types of men. Andrew, dude, listen, I'm a police officer. Andrew, I messed up, dude. Like, I'm so sorry that I did right. this, dude. I didn't mean it. This is what happened. And you could see the stress in his eyes from him hurting you. Hey, dad, dad, I know you told me not to do this. And I was, I was with my friends and, or, hey, Andrew, my bad, bro. Yeah, it won't happen again. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a difference. Of course, there you is. can't hide your heart from God. Absolutely. So I, that's why I say only God could judge. And, and I remember what I was going to say about uh, your God and my God, right? I believe that if there is a God out there, He wants you to come in the same direction that I'm going, yeah. and vice versa. So I think I never want to uh, debate religion ever because then I'm trying to disprove your God, and that might be holding your heart, and I don't want to do that. I agree. But what we could do is I say, I'll pray to my God. And you pray to your God to open up one of our eyes and hearts. And whoever is wrong or whoever is right will guide us with wisdom to the right direction. I love that. Guys, I can say this is one of the most matured conversations I have listened to this year. Like, the year comes to an end, and I think this is one of the best. Like, to be honest, you, you have this kind of conversation with someone. Like, I love the fact he talks about forgiveness and what jesus said about it like it's it's crazy seven times seven seven like we all know that this life we're going to get judged by what the way we judge others and that's why most of them jesus said jesus said love your neighbor as yourself because if you listen to that statement when you love your neighbor when you love your neighbor as yourself see we have offended ourselves thousands of times of tell ourselves we are going to read at six o'clock and six like let's 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 do this tomorrow like so when people fall short and you see it you're like nah don't worry most times if you see yourself the way maybe if you see yourself like i've offended god and this way after him i won't do this and i've done it and you see someone offending you and you're like who am i to judge like I promise God I won't do this and I did it like that kind of hole in your heart like you just forgive the person like because there's nothing else to do but like what he said about Islam being rigid I understand Islam is rigid and I understand that there are a lot of extremists in the religion if we want to be honest I can remember when he said that when Andrew did said that a, a video popped up in my head. It is happening in Nigeria where a girl in her class group said something like they should stop posting 
Islamic stuff that this is a class group and she said something about Mohammed and the next day she was killed like in 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 a country like this it's 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 actually fucked up because like she was you know like she was shot she was beaten stoned to death and they made video of it laughing like i feel judgment is supposed to be left for god and not humans and these are things that extremists do that makes people see islam as a religion that promotes war and chaos but it's not like that but i would say there are a lot of extremists in islam and it's really really heartbreaking for the religion but guys tell me what you think about this just like just got my channel i'll see you next time guys best